Hi everyone, Alex Tardy, meteorologist with National Weather Service. Time for an update. We're still talking about this extended heat wave even after Labor Day, as uh, we expected it to continue, and it has. Hot temperatures in Southern California is the main theme, but we have tropical rains potentially from Hurricane King. Let's uh, get going and talk about all this. Here are the highlights. It's already been hot, you know that. It's also been muggy, especially along the coast with high dew point temperatures. Excessive heat through this week. We're gonna start developing an easterly flow on Thursday, which could make for the hottest days on the coast. This also means fire weather conditions worsening as the week goes on, but keep in mind, we are looking at the potential for significant rainfall. Uh, starting on Friday, and peaking out or most widespread Friday night and Saturday. Do tropical cyclones affect San Diego? Well, there's been several that have actually taken a path and actually held together the tropical cyclone I or low pressure area, as noted here with the names and years. Usually they move off to the west in the normal flow, the normal monsoonal flow, and they miss us. Notable tropical cyclones are listed here. One in particular, 2014, we had widespread rain, flooding, and even severe thunderstorms in San Diego. But also July 2015, what about the rain from Lydia in September 2017? That was uh, great timing despite the easterly winds it produced because it reduced our fire weather threat once it started raining. Then of course we dried out again in December 2017. So take a look at these here. It's been really hot. Um, here's an overview of temperatures on Saturday. This is one of the hottest days for some of our coastal areas, including San Diego as shown here. We rolled into Sunday, it got even hotter in the LA basin. Um, and it remained downright hot, 105 to 112 in the Inland Empire. Then on Monday, Labor Day, we saw some drying occur. Um, and that just led to more fire weather problems. Uh, look at the temperatures around 105 in the foothills of San Diego, which was an extension of the 105 to 112 across the Inland Empire. The coast on Monday did see a little bit of relief, a little bit more marine air filtered in. It's still muggy. Here's a look at dew point temperatures. You can track those at the link shown here. 50s in the Inland Empire, which is not that bad, but it's 110 degrees, so it's all relative, right? 60s across the Imperial Valley, Salton Sea, Coachella Valley. But the coast of San Diego is still hanging on to upper 60s and lower 70s all the way up to LA County. Why? Well, the water temperature is warm as well. So in addition to the monsoon moisture that came up on Saturday and Sunday, some of that monsoon moisture was associated with Javier, which moved well off to our west. But take a look at these ocean water temperatures. They're much above normal, even for the normal peak in early September. So the red and the yellow and the orange means above where it should be, above the normals for this time of year for ocean temperatures. Why? Um, well, we're in a La Nina, right? So that's colder than average sea surface temperatures along the equatorial Pacific Ocean, but it's been a disconnect. The Pacific remains really warm based on uh, three years of drought, and you can see those big blobs of warmth, and really it's been following the overall weather pattern, staying above average. What weather pattern am I talking about? Um, well, over the past summer, past few months, uh, upper level ridging has been dominant over the central Pacific, really warm water underneath that, a uh, lack of storms. We've had some persistent cool weather stuck in the middle that's been affecting the Pacific Northwest, like Oregon and Northern California. And uh, we've been in between with a um, significant monsoon season uh, that occurred, especially in the desert Southwest around that upper level high pressure. That same upper level high pressure, you guessed it, that caused all the extreme heat June and July in Texas and the plains. How wet has it been this monsoon? Well, this shows you where it's been wet, wetter than usual. The desert southwest, including Southern California, especially the deserts, the blue shaded, uh, one and a half, two times as wet compared to an average monsoon season. You can ask the question, um, is it the wettest on record? Short answer is no for most areas, except for the Arizona-New Mexico border 
dark green shaded. Temperatures. They've been warm. Uh, warmest across the mountains and deserts compared to averages. So this summer has been warm overall across all the interior west, uh, but especially over the mountains and deserts. Warmer than average. If you ask the question also um, compared to history, is it the warmest on record? No, but look at the entire West, top 10% warmest on record. There are some areas in Southern California, including our mountains and deserts, that are the hottest on record, the deep red shaded areas for June through August. Okay, um, why so hot? The weather pattern won't go away. Upper level high pressure, that's a dome of hot air, blocks all the storms, brings the heat waves. Without that, it wouldn't be excessively hot, it would be normal. We also have tropical cyclone K to our south. We have that monsoonal flow that has shifted off into the ocean because the high pressure is so strong and so dominant, bringing dry air in. It gets stronger and more dominant, as you can see expands on Wednesday on the right-hand side image, leaving the door open for potential tropical cyclone from the south. When we look later in the week, Thursday, Friday, the upper level high pressure doesn't go anywhere but it starts to get beaten down by a storm going across the Canadian border. And it weakens. Um, and that also allows, very subtle, the wind flow to allow hurricane and tropical cyclone remnants of K to drift along the Baja coast. Okay, we're going to have to deal with heat and high heat risk. Hotter than usual, especially coast and valleys. Look at the Inland Empire baking. Uh, even for them, 105, 112 is much above average. If we look on Thursday, we could see some of the hottest temperatures of this heat wave along the coast. And we're looking at continued hot temperatures inland. And all this is much above average coast and valleys. What kind of temperatures are we talking about on Thursday? We're talking about 90s along the coast. Just go in a few miles and you're up around 100. And then... Um, our Inland Empire in most areas just baking, getting over 105 again. We're also going to look at morning lows. So Thursday night, Friday morning with tropical moisture coming in from the south, cloud cover, maybe even some rain by Friday morning. Uh, we're looking at a really warm night potentially, and that would be for Friday morning where everyone's going to stay in the 70s and some places 80s. When we talk about heat, uh, we talk about the air temperature, right? But it's also important to consider the dew point temperature we've been discussing, how much moisture is in the air. The wet bulb global temperature does a great job showing that the gray dark shaded areas, this is for Wednesday showing readings in the upper 80s and lower 90s. And that's just dangerously hot when you get in that range. It's really hard for the body to cool down and excessive sweating can easily occur if you don't take breaks or aren't able to go into a shaded area or air conditioning. Is this unusual heat? Certainly, we've been talking about it for a week. Uh, right now, it looks like the most unusual heat is the Great Basin in the Central Valley of California. Then later this week, the unusualness of it shifts to the south as we have a tropical cyclone coming up, squeezing with the high pressure to the north, creating offshore flow. What kind of temperatures are we looking at? Um, like discussed, 90s even for the coast, a few pages, places touching 100, especially on Thursday, could be our hottest day along the coast. But inland areas just not catching a break uh, all the way through Thursday, potentially even remaining hot on Friday until we get cloud cover and some precipitation. Avoid the heat if you can, but otherwise limit outdoor activities, plenty of fluids, water, Dress lightly, take frequent breaks, sunscreen. In some cases, when it's 105 and the dew point is 70, you just can't, you can't get a break. It's, it's just going to be unbearable for all of us. So this is dangerous heat. Let's take a look at Hurricane K. This information is provided by the National Hurricane Center. Um, and this will be updated every six hours all the way through um, late this week when moisture finally reaches here. In Southern California, are we going to take a direct hit? It looks like the short answer is no, uh, but an indirect hit from significant moisture and the offshore winds that are created by when you get low pressure going by to the south. 
the rainfall potential is significant. Um, I just took an example here, Palm Springs, anywhere from a half inch to two inches of water, with most of that occurring uh, Friday into early Saturday. So there is potential as we go from Friday evening all the way to Saturday for significant rain to squeeze and to reach into Southern California. If we look at San Diego and we measure it by the amount of water vapor or moisture that's in the atmosphere, how tropical is it? Well, right now it's looking like very tropical with values exceeding two inches. That's the amount of water, if you were to squeeze it out of the atmosphere right overhead, how much would come down as rain. That's a lot of potential, a lot of potential uh, for San Diego. So is there a threat for lightning from the tropical cyclone coming up? Yes, the moisture is going to be very deep, just enough instability. And really what we're looking at is anywhere has the potential, the mountains, the coast, the valleys, and the deserts in the orange shaded. Uh, certainly elevated threat for lightning as we go Friday afternoon through Saturday. We need to talk about the winds. So the winds will be a little bit confusing because the winds will be increasing starting Thursday, which means no sea breeze, a little bit of offshore flow, increasing Friday notably with stronger offshore flow. That's an east wind. It behaves like a Santa Ana wind, though it's technically not a Santa Ana wind. It's related to the tropical system and ultimately the low pressure area coming up to our south. So wind blows from high to low pressure and that's basically what's gonna happen. And our mountains will do the same thing with that wind. They'll enhance it as shown here. So some really windy conditions could develop on Friday uh, right before the rainfall and the showers and the thunderstorms and even during the rainfall. How much rain? Preliminary estimates look for significant rainfall potential shown in the yellow. The deserts look like they have the best chance because of the easterly flow and the wind riding up that east slope and then squeezing it out. And then the coast with the less uh, amount of rain only because of that downsloping drier wind. But nonetheless, it looks like everyone should see significant rain. So there's a general widespread threat for some isolated flooding from excessive rainfall. A really beneficial rain because we have been experiencing really hot temperatures, dry fuels, and even low humidity over our mountains. So this is good timing for that, but it might be too much at once. The last of the heat is on Friday. So we're finally gonna catch a break when the clouds and rain start moving in here, though it, it will still be muggy and still on the hot side before we get that rainfall on Friday. Here are the highlights. I'll let you take a look at these highlights across our region. We're gonna basically go from a prolonged excessive heat wave with dry conditions over our mountains to windy conditions over our mountains and foothills and potential for widespread rain and even thunderstorms as we go into late week Friday and of course Saturday in the weekend. Check your forecast before any act outdoor activities before any plans as we get closer to the potential for tropical moisture. And keep in mind, right now we're dealing with very hot, excessive temperatures and considerably elevated fire weather threat.